Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy help define our contemporary world. My guest today has been described as one of the best crisis managers in international finance and institution builders. To use current jargon from at least one internet site, he's also been described as the Rahul Dravid of Indian finance. He's had a long and distinguished career as a civil servant, a member of the Indian Administrative Service. He's been Chief Secretary of Tripura, a Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, and really earned his spurs in the public domain with his remarkable turnaround of UTI, a brief stint with the IDBI, and has most recently managed to put back substantially on the rails of Security and Exchange Board of India, of which he is the chairperson. I'm delighted to welcome M. Damodaran. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> Tell me, as, as a um, civil servant bureaucrat who radiates so much energy and has pulled off these remarkable turnarounds, what is, this, what is the secret of, 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 of your success in doing that, particularly because it, it, you know, the popular perception is that the systems are tired, the institutions are worn out, and it's so difficult for someone in public spaces uh, to catalyze and initiate change. And the only other name that sort of immediately comes to mind is sort of, you know, Sridharan with, with the metro, and there's Damodaran. What is it that enab enables people like you uh, to turn these institutions around, personal qualities of leadership, what are the elements of it? <laughs> I think basically uh, some of it is situation neutral, some of it is institution neutral, some of it is context neutral. But what about the uh, individual specific? Uh, I'm not going to let you get out of that one. No, uh, <laughs> I was coming to that. I think at uh -huh. the base of all of this is incorrigible optimism. I think a very simple belief, long held and as yet not proved wrong, that uh, if there is a problem, there must be a solution. And the trick is to go and find that solution. When you get started out with that and marry that with the other principle, which is that every individual, every institution has strengths as much as it has weaknesses. If you focus on weaknesses, you'll get lost. I'm not saying for a moment ignore the weaknesses. But if you build on strengths, I think you become strong enough to deal with the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Identify people there that can be a part of the solution, mm -hmm. not part of the problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few things will fall in place reasonably quickly. That sort of seems sort of like yeah. uh, idyllic uh, management theory. But uh, what about public institutions as opposed to private spaces where there's you know, greater freedom to hire, fire, move people around, competition, incentives. I mean, look at yourself. You're working at a you know, salary of uh, civil servant salary and engaging and working with people who are sort of you know, drawing, uh, I don't know what, thousands of times that. Um, so you, know, you have specific motivations and, 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 a, and, and a specific personality elements of, 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 of your technique of management. But the perception is that the system is decaying. The system's, well, dare I use uh, an impolite word and say the system stinks. How do you go around and, and, and clean it up? I think if you look at the system in its entirety and believe that you ought to have a clean system in place before you tackle institutions, which I'm afraid is the way some of us look at it, mm -hmm. you'll never ever get started. Because then the problems are so big the magnitude, the dimensions, the variety, it can frighten you into inactivity. Mm -hmm. The trick is to see where is it that I can make a mark quickly. You need quick wins. No one has the patience you know, to see you put in place a very elaborate kind of a solution. You need mm -hmm. to see the quick wins, the short-term gains. Mm -hmm. You need to see people as beneficiaries and they need to see themselves as benefiting. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you walk into an organization that is stressed and you have disbelievers. So we have one more guy who thinks he's come in with all the solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, let's show him up for what he is. Mm -hmm. If you allow that to get to you, clearly you aren't getting started. Mm -hmm. uh, then a whole lot of things fall in place. And I believe that there is no institution which given native Indian genius. Mm -hmm. You don't need anything that you need to import from outside. Mm -hmm. Native Indian genius, reasonable amount of hard work, incorrigible optimism. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, the script writer above there, more things are wrought by prayer, I think, mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. this world dreams mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. So has that been to yeah. you, to you sometimes pray for success, for things to work out? Is that a, 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 a specific technique or a, or a philosophical surrender to something larger than yourself? 
No, I think again it goes back to basics. You know, people told us when we were young, and I'm sure you've heard this, that 50% is what you do, 50% is what somebody much bigger than you, your creator does. Mm -hmm. But there are students, for example, who say, and this is what I've heard, I haven't practiced it, mm -hmm. who say that if 50% is what he's going to do, 50% will get me a second division. It's good <laughs> enough. Why do I need to get started? <laughs> No, clearly, if you do your 50%, somebody's going to, you know, top that up with something. Mm -hmm. I think good, honest effort, well-intentioned effort, mm -hmm. gets a buy-in at the organization level, mm -hmm. gets a buy-in, the disbelievers mm -hmm. move gradually towards mm -hmm. neutrality, if not to belief, mm -hmm. and over time to belief. Mm -hmm. I think then things fall in place. What about some yeah. of the sort of, you know, yeah. the, the conventional perceptions of, uh, obstacles to success in positions such as yours, you know, political interference, uh, you know, corruption down the line. Uh, how, how, how do you begin to tackle that exceptionally as you appear let, to do? Let me deal with political interference mm -hmm. on the assumption that mm -hmm. this is something that is all pervasive. Mm -hmm. People seem to believe it is. I'm not uh, presenting a contrary point of view. Perhaps it's right. Maybe I've experienced mm -hmm. it less. But uh, I state this wherever I go. I have not come here to either generate pressure or transmit pressure. Mm -hmm. If somebody exerts pressure on me and I'm not man enough to resist it, I will internalize it. You'll never get to know about it. Mm -hmm. And praise be the Lord, I haven't had to do that uh, more than maybe a couple of times uh, to that. One other thought which is developing on something that we spoke about earlier. How do organizations perform? I have a very simple tripod theory. Mm -hmm. And I think family situations, social situations, organizations respond to it. Mm -hmm. A tripod needs all three legs to stand on, unlike the chairs that you and I are sitting on. Mm -hmm. We could easily sit on these a little gingerly with one leg less. It would still stand. Mm -hmm. A tripod will collapse. Mm -hmm. So you need all three, same length, equal mm -hmm. measure. Mm -hmm. You need empowerment. Everybody cannot be cogs in a wheel. They need to be seen as contributing. Mm -hmm. You know, if people are to be empowered to perform, you need to incentivize them also. Mm -hmm. If you have empowerment and incentivization, and the guy is not going to run away, mm -hmm. you need accountability. Mm -hmm. You set up this organization on these three principles, mm -hmm. and more often than not, that by itself will deliver. I have absolutely mm -hmm. no doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're watching a conversation with the chairperson of SEBI, M. Damodar, and we'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with civil servant and chairperson of uh, SEBI M. Damodaran. Uh, the Security and, and an Exchange Board of India uh, has sort of run into a, 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 a time of grave uncertainty uh, in the stock markets and, and you've managed uh, a, a bull run in, uh, you know, for several months. And I remember the last time we were meant to have a conversation was just about the time that uh, it began to sink. Did your heart sink with it, or was that something that you thought was the natural process of the ups and downs that, that everybody was talking about? You know, one day there will be a correction. But one day there will be a <laughs> correction. Anything that goes up almost vertically mm -hmm. is in danger of falling down almost vertically. Mm -hmm. If the climb is steep, the fall will be equally precipitous. Clearly, there was cases of overvaluation. And we've been told this month after month by people that should know. People were speculating on the levels of the index. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I said then, I'm saying now, and I'll say it later too, that neither at the individual level nor at the organization level are we concerned about the levels of the indices. Mm -hmm. We're concerned about orderly conduct to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And the day that there was this huge fall, mm -hmm. which most people saw as a calamity, Let's look at the brighter side, and I've trained myself mm -hmm. to look at that. Mm -hmm. What did it show? Our systems held up. Mm -hmm. In face of that kind of a fall, our systems held up. It hit the circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. We stopped trading for an hour as per our prescribed mm -hmm. drill. Mm -hmm. People maybe thought back, took their eyes away from the screen. Mm -hmm. Are we doing the right things? And then you saw immediately a kind of climb. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that each of these movements mm -hmm. were right movements at that mm -hmm. point of time. Mm -hmm. but. So long as there was no systemic issue, mm -hmm. and that's the only time that I spoke about this, I came out, 
I didn't talk about the levels. Mm -hmm. I said the systems are in place. There's no need to worry on that front. Give us a, 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 a 101 in a sense about the role of uh, SEBI. What role does it perform? I mean, we, we, we know it's the, the regulator of uh, you know, the, 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 of, of, of the stock exchange, and uh, what role does it perform as the regulator? What, what well, I think our mandate is derived from the SEBI Act, which puts mm -hmm. it as simply and as elegantly as you can put it. It says, regulate the market. Mm -hmm. It says, develop the market. Mm -hmm. And both these are not to be seen as being in opposition to each other. Mm -hmm. Some unfortunately see mm -hmm. growth as opposed to regulation, containment as being along with regulation. Mm -hmm. More important than both these, protect the interest of the investors. Mm -hmm. Our job is to make the market a reasonably safe place mm -hmm. for men with reasonable expectations mm -hmm. to come there in search of reasonable returns. Mm -hmm. That's our job. Mm -hmm. If we can do that mm -hmm. day after day, I think we would have earned our keep small as it is. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, you, have, you have often said that one of your objectives is for the arm army, you know, Matthias Sen has used that phrase to, uh, to be able to come into the market and feel confident and, and, and secure about uh, you know, the yes. very processes uh, that you're talking about. Um, at the same time, while investment has to been seen to be so substantially in, you know, increasing in, in, in the stock markets, that the number of investors isn't significantly growing. Do you think that's a function of, 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 of the nature of, of, of the Indian psyche, the nature of the larger economy, the, you know, the way uh, wealth is distributed? Or is it a function of the way the stock market works and then people still have fears and trepidation that, you know, it's also something that, you know, that, that traditionally you didn't do because it's speculative and you went into gold and real estate. Is the psychology, the reality, what would you say to the Aam Admi to encourage him to come in? I think three or four things really. A person that has not come to the market thus far needs to be told why out of every hundred rupees that he has his investable surplus, he shouldn't put it all in one investment basket. He needs to spread it. I'm not saying all hundred comes to stock market, but looking at his risk profile, looking at his risk appetite, his, his family members, his earning, his cash flow, his needs short term and long term, how much of that hundred rupees should he expect to invest in the stock market, whether in equity or debt? This is a question which is individual specific. We don't have, unfortunately, either a massive investor education campaign. We've started working on that. Or a large body of investment advisors, like in developed countries, who sit with you, look at what your needs are, look at what your income is, and do that. Uh, yeah, well, uh, 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 yes. uh, before you come to sort of the next, yeah. uh, next point, that uh, I think there's grave concern about the role of investment managers and investment advisors and institutions that, that offer advice uh, and, and, and the commissions that they tend to make and, and the lack of integrity in, in encouraging people to make uh, you know, frequent t uh, turnovers in their prof uh, uh, investment profiles and, and, and distribution of investments, etc. Uh, is there a move to sort of somehow regulate this? Can you regulate it? What do you do? I think we can regulate it. There is a move to regulate it. There is a problem of numbers. Clearly, as an organization, we need more people. We've just beefed up the organization to look at a larger number of intermediaries, including the types that you mentioned, to regulate them. The second is to see how effectively can you punish somebody who steps out of line with what you do. Now, we don't have the kind of powers that some of the other regulators worldwide have like sitting across the table, levying a hev heavy penalty, something of that kind. Mm -hmm. We go through a tortuous, time-tested process, where by the time you've finished with it, the punishment is neither adequate mm -hmm. nor is it speedy. Mm -hmm. So the disincentive, the deterrence is not there for stepping out of line. That's one. The other thing, if you can step back to the investor for a bit, why mm -hmm. is the investor not in? The last 15 years, we've had at least three major irregularities in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And every time, it's the smaller guy who gets hurt disproportionately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He comes in at the wrong time to the market, picks up the wrong stock at the wrong prices, thinking that this is something that's always going up. Mm -hmm. and then when he gets hurt, mm -hmm. he won't come back. Mm -hmm. His friends won't come back. No one within his sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. That's the real tough job, to mm -hmm. tell people that mm -hmm. your three requirements of liquidity, safety, mm -hmm. and returns, mm -hmm. you will get in this market. Mm -hmm 
reasonable risk taking. Mm -hmm. There's no reason, zero risk in life. Mm -hmm. Clearly, there can't mm -hmm. be risk, zero risk. It's in markets. interesting you use the the phrase irregularities. I think sort of most people just call it plain simple scams, mm -hmm. and uh, and and yet sort of uh, a lot of your efforts at at at, at effectively regulating uh, the, the the markets uh, run into difficulties with the appellate tribunal, and and not all of the things that you initiate get through the appeals process. You've been a student of law. It's just just another example of the way our, our legal processes and the way we sort of uh, delay justice, delay processes, you know, sort of corruption, and all the elements that afflict the judicial process also tend to inhibit uh, your ability to act quickly or your actions to be implemented and carried out and not just sort of sidestepped by an appellate tribunal. Let me give you quickly two or three numbers. Mm -hmm. Out of every 100 orders that we pass, 47 orders are not appealed against. Mm -hmm. So either people think it's not their while to appeal mm -hmm. or they're happy with the orders. Mm -hmm. Out of the 53 that go, mm -hmm. taking that as a base of 100 again, 27% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. have been overruled, which is one out of four cases that go in appeal get overruled. Mm -hmm. uh, is that final? No. We've gone to the Supreme Court in some of those cases and got it reversed. Mm -hmm. But clearly that said, we're not sitting back and saying the numbers are good enough. Mm -hmm could be far, far better. Mm -hmm. Every adverse judgment today we look at as mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't want to repeat errors. Mm -hmm. We believe it's human to make a mistake once, mm -hmm. but uh, persevering mm -hmm. with the same mistake mm -hmm. is something that we are not going to tolerate. Mm -hmm. We've come down hard on ourselves to do that. Laws need to be changed. Mm -hmm. There's lack of clarity in the way we've drafted mm -hmm. laws. Mm -hmm. We're working on that too. Mm -hmm. To see that not too much is left to interpretation. Mm -hmm. Then there's one very major point. Mm -hmm. There is a principle of preponderance of probability when you look at the stock market. Mm -hmm. In criminal law, you're talking in terms of proving beyond doubt. Mm -hmm. Now, if you subject irregularities in the stock market mm -hmm. to the degree of proof that criminal law requires, mm -hmm. clearly many people will get away. Mm -hmm. So there is an attitude mm -hmm. of how you look at it, mm -hmm. and clearly or we need to train ourselves to look at that. That's one. You're watching a conversation with M. Damodar and chairperson of SEBI. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with the chairperson of the Security and uh, Exchange Board of India. Uh, what assurances, uh, what can we say to um, the AM Admi uh, to encourage them to come uh, into the uh, to enter the stock market in a political and economic climate where even if these numbers were to grow, they would still remain a very small fraction uh, of, of, of the population, if I were to use a, a sweeping word in a sense uh, for that. Uh, there, is, there is a great deal, deal of uh, suspicion uh, in, 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 in many sort of political ideologies of, of the market and, and the market forces and, and the market-driven economy. Also, in terms of, uh, I guess, you know, you, you, you talked about, you know, the God, you know, the divine, and I think also a, a great deal in tradition that, you know, business is something that you don't soil your hands with, and it is something impure about it. Uh, to what degree do you, do you feel that these are inhibitors to economic growth in India, to what might happen uh, to, to economic development in India, and what personal philosophy circumscribes it for you? Let me look at this <laughs> in terms of two sets of issues. <laughs> One is about the market itself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. As I keep telling people in the beginning, God played God. Mm -hmm. Then the state started playing God, uh -huh. didn't do too well at it. Uh -huh. Then a lot of people expected market to play uh -huh. God. And the minute you expect market to play God, you're going to see the same mistake that you expected when the other God failed, which is a state. So let God play God. The market is what we make out of it. It, it can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. It is what we make out of it. That said, I think what we need to do is to tell people that if you have a hundred rupees again, where will you go and invest it? There is a perception that banks are safe. Deposit insurance in banks is a hundred thousand rupees. State ownership and the reluctance of the state to allow banks to fail is seen as the equivalent of deposit insurance. That's one side of the problem. The second, the return that you get from the bank. If you factor in inflation and tax, 
Is the bank paying you for your keeping your money or are you paying the <laughs> bank? People need to ask themselves <laughs> these questions. Mm -hmm. Is gold, for example, as an investment a one-way street? We've seen gold prices fall recently. Mm -hmm. We've seen real estate go up to the roof, fall again, mm -hmm. and then again it's going up. So if you can take those risks mm -hmm. and see that environment is relatively risk-free, mm -hmm. come to a market that the world is saying in terms of a recent development, you know, I must share this with you. Mm -hmm. I have been elected chairman of the International Organization of Securities Commissions mm -hmm. for the Emerging Markets Group, which is 79 countries. Well, one more pat on the back and congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> now, clearly, this mm -hmm. is not to do with who I am or what mm -hmm. my face looks like. It is a recognition of what the outside world perceives mm -hmm. the state of regulation in the Indian market to be over time and the steps we are taking to make it even better. Mm -hmm. If that's a perception outside of India, mm -hmm. I think the selling job to the Aam Aadmi, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this is a better place, mm -hmm. is something that we need to work on. Tell us sort of uh, uh, very briefly a kind of uh, summing up for the, for the small investor that, uh, you know, what are some of the initiatives that you're, you're taking, not just to protect them, but to make um, uh, more appealing uh, uh, products available to them, less confusion, so that um, you know well, you've had an IPO scam, but uh, you know the, the tendency of uh, a number of different funds with sort of similar identities with different names promoting themselves. Uh, you have on the Anvil um, real estate funds. You have also on the Anvil you know a fund that will protect the investors' capital, uh, and then so he's less nervous going into the market. What are some of the new things that are emerging that would be of a, you know, appealing to the, to the risk, well, I wouldn't say risk averse, but risk inhibited uh, small investor? You know, I'm glad that you mentioned <laughs> these things because we've clearly lined up a whole lot of new products. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we've done is a gold exchange traded fund. Mm -hmm. Now, the Indian's love for gold is not something that I need to elaborate <laughs> on. The whole world knows that. Mm -hmm. And yet, gold is not something the average Indian, the Aam Aadmi, mm -hmm. can go to a shop, write out a check, mm -hmm. and buy. Mm -hmm. We've introduced a scheme where for as low as 100 rupees a unit, mm -hmm. you pick up unit certificates. Mm -hmm. Gold is the underlying security. Mm -hmm. The value moves along with the value of gold. Mm -hmm. When you've piled up enough certificates mm -hmm. over a period of time, you have an event in your family that you want to mm -hmm. link to buying of gold, mm -hmm. and there are several such events. Mm -hmm. You then take those certificates, you exit from the scheme and buy gold. Mm -hmm. This is the common Indian participating mm -hmm. in a very widely held perception that gold is a great mm -hmm. asset quality, and I am not mm -hmm. being judgmental mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. for a moment. We're doing the same thing with real estate. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to own real estate. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can own mm -hmm. real estate. Mm -hmm. Buy it in units, mm -hmm. share the prosperity of that sector without owning property mm -hmm. in your name in its entirety. Mm -hmm. We've now come to what I'm glad you mentioned, which mm -hmm. is the capital protection oriented scheme mm -hmm. that we're using oriented advisedly mm -hmm. because of past practice. Mm -hmm. Earlier the protection came mm -hmm. from sponsors with deep pockets, the banks, mm -hmm. the insurance companies who said, I'm giving you this promise, mm -hmm. if the scheme fails, I'll write out a check. Mm -hmm. These schemes are different. Mm -hmm. These schemes will invest in a manner in which mm -hmm. your capital will get protected. It's not a sponsor writing out mm -hmm. checks. Now, all of these are tested products in the international market. Mm -hmm. We're doing that. Mm -hmm. We've introduced uh, a restricted program for uh, large stocks which are being issued overseas mm -hmm. and as GDRs to come here and qualified invest mm -hmm. institutional mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Now, clearly this is a market that's seeing your products. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable or, or, or uh, do you panic at the role of uh, you know, foreign institutional investors? Maybe I put the question as two extremes, but how do you feel about their role uh, long term? Uh, in the in the Indian economy, because one of the aspects you have mentioned is uh, in regulating, promoting, uh, making the market, uh, the, the, the the stock exchange attractive uh, to investors, and plainly foreign institutional investors are a source of instability in many ways. Uh, what view do you take on that? To put it to sort of put a put a bureaucratic phrase there, and and what actions are you contemplating to try and manage that? No, as I said, let's get back to the preamble of the uh -huh. SEBI Act. It says develop the market. Uh -huh. Developing the market means more investors, more stocks. 
more investors means more money and more investors means Indian and foreign. Mm -hmm. We spoke about Indian mm -hmm. investors, retail investors. Mm -hmm. Indian institutions, the mutual funds mm -hmm. are coming up. Mm -hmm. They're clearly a stronger presence today than they were in the past. Foreign institutional investors would come from a handful of countries earlier. Today we have close to 40 countries that invest in India. And these are countries which wouldn't have invested in the Indian market a couple of years ago. Clearly the word has gone around, this is a story buy, worth buying into. They recognize that there are issues, not that they believe it's an issue-free market. What are our problems, if any, with them? Our problems are, we are saying we need to know, A, the quality of money. Is this money that originates from crime? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. B, we need to know who is the investor. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see the proximate investor. We mm -hmm. want to know mm -hmm. whose money it is that's mm -hmm. coming in. Mm -hmm. So you have in place what we call know your customer norms. Mm -hmm. We expect brokers, we expect other intermediaries to put those in place. Mm -hmm. If that is done, mm -hmm. this business about foreigners coming in large numbers, exiting at the same time. Now clearly all of them are in the market to make money. Mm -hmm. Let's understand that clearly. Mm -hmm. If all of them are in the market to make money, in a falling market caused by some people leaving, some will see buying opportunities. Mm -hmm. And let me end with this. Mm -hmm. On the two days in the last three years that we've had precipitous falls in the market, mm -hmm. one that you alluded to some time ago, mm -hmm. and one which was 2004, mm -hmm. There were as many institutions, foreign institutions, that bought mm -hmm. as sold. Mm -hmm. It just happened that those that sold, sold larger numbers, mm -hmm. sold earlier in the day, and then the downslide started. Mm -hmm. But it's not that everyone has the same view of the world mm -hmm. because they all come from outside India, no. Mm -hmm. If it is in sort of uh, transgressing your privacy, uh, as someone who has such an intimate knowledge and, 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 and sitting on, on, on the buttons, as it were, um, you know, with, with, with the stock market, what is your personal investment philosophy and strategy? Well, luckily we spoke about the compensation structure <laughs> for civil servants. <laughs> Again, looking at the brighter side is the way government compensates you. Uh -huh. It doesn't leave you with too much of investable services <laughs> to lose your sleep over where to invest. But uh -huh. that said, that said, uh -huh. I have, as a matter of personal philosophy, decided not to invest in stocks or in mutual funds while I'm holding a regulatory position. Mm -hmm. Neither I will invest nor will any close relatives of mine add to what they have or reduce from what they have. Mm -hmm. Because I believe when I look at a screen, mm -hmm. I need to look at everything on that screen equally objectively. Mm -hmm. I can't look at one screen, one entry and say, Oh, that, that's something that I hold, which way is it moving? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I'll lose peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will invest when I'm done with this present assignment. Mm -hmm. But as of today, I look at all of those dispassionately, mm -hmm. and objectively, because I don't own a single stock mm -hmm. or a single mm -hmm. pitch fund. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've alluded to, uh, to God and we've alluded to 50% to effort, 50%, uh, you know, the sort of uh, the gentleman or lady up uh, in the heavens. Uh, is there a, a, a personal guiding philosophy that you have that circumscribes all that you do, not just when you're managing a financial institutions, but you know, you've been chief secretary in, in Tripura, uh, a, a much neglected uh, you know, part of India, uh, a, a place of great turbulence. There's so many elements in, in, in life. Is there a, a, a guiding faith, uh, a, a formal religious structure, a, a place of worship, something that, that, that drives you and, and, and gives you this sense of infectious optimism that you've spoken about? I'm deeply religious. Mm -hmm. But you ask me what's the last time I went to a temple, I would have to think. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that when we abolished intermediaries and land reforms, etc., <laughs> we should have abolished intermediaries in a whole lot of other places. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I communicate directly with my creator uh -huh. every night uh -huh. before I go to sleep. Uh -huh. I don't formally render accounts every night because that's too short a period. <laughs> you might have no entries on the credit side, some hopefully not on the debit uh -huh, side too. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But am I at peace with myself before I finally sign off for the day? Yes. Why? Because every day I tell my prayers, not in the puja room, sitting in bed for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. The other principle is, I believe you are accountable on earth only to one person. That's the person who looks back at you from your mirror. <laughs> if you're comfortable with that guy, mm -hmm. and he's comfortable with you, 
I don't think you have to worry about other people being comfortable. It will all fall in place. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Damodaran, I really wish looking at you that I was looking at a mirror. Thank you very much. Thank you. This my has been a great honor and a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.